This is On Diversity, a podcast series by the Institute of Policy Studies, Singapore. This is the third episode of second season, and I'm your host, Lam Ka Singh, Associate Director of IPS and also a former journalist. Today's episode is on the plight of buskers during the pandemic, and we have a busker here, of course, and that will be Yo Ying Hao, co-chairman of the Buskers Association and freelance busker with Chinese pop band After Workers, and Nisun GRC MP Louis Ng, who has advocated for buskers and helped to set up the association in 2019. Welcome to the podcast today. Hello, thank Hi. you for having me here. Hello, thank you for having me here too. My first question will be to Ying Hao. Why do you become a busker in the first place? Okay, so uh, I was a... Uh, so actually we were a group from uh, who graduated from SMU uh, in 2015 and we sort of wanted to look at how we could continue performing. We were music enthusiasts, obviously. Um, and then we we chanced upon the busking scheme and we thought that this would be a good chance for us to to uh, hone our craft and be a, be, a, be a band and perform regularly together. And then, of course, we all had our our jobs, uh, day jobs, which is why we're called after workers, right? Um, and so... Nice. Yeah. And so that's that's how we sort of started. And then, um, yeah, we started at Marina Bay, uh, Mist Walk. So we were performing there about once a month. And then after about two years, I think when we re-auditioned, we asked, uh, for, we asked for Orchard Road instead. And then, um, and then from then on, we were, we were given the, the spot at Orchard Road. And then since then, we've been outside Ion for for a good two to three years until the pandemic happened yeah cool okay so let me just check with louis also like um we understand that you moved and a german motion back in 19 uh, 2019 um just very curious like why do you decide to help the buskers well it was uh, quite a story actually but i was organizing an event in parliament and you know we wanted some entertainment as well and i thought why don't i use this opportunity to bring buskers into parliament, change their lives and let them not just perform on the streets, but perform and in parliament as well. And I got in touch with this lady called Yi Xuan, who was from the ETC, and uh, they came over, they performed. And very sadly, I mean, uh, during the event, I think Yi Xuan was telling me about the, the plight of buskers, that, uh, whether she could have a word, and, and she had some suggestions on how we can make the scheme much better. But I, I remember I told her at the dinner, it was quite a busy night, so why don't I catch up with you another time and, and talk about this? And... Of course, that sad news was that uh, two days later, she passed away. Oh, dear. And so I, you know, there's this, you know, I always say that I wish I had the power to turn back time because I, I really wish that I could have heard what she wanted to tell me. Uh, but that's why I decided then if I couldn't speak to her anymore, she's passed on, but I could now speak to her, her bandmates from the ETC, uh, the rest of the buskers to try and understand what uh, the issues they're facing, what she wanted to bring up and then make sure that she had this voice in parliament. And I always remember that one thing that she told me was that uh, she always found it difficult because she was in a wheelchair and going from venue to venue and sometimes when you uh, she was at Amokyo Hub if you go there and then it's full my goodness she's got to pack her speakers and all take a taxi to the next venue realise uh, it's full as well <laughs> oh dear and then she yeah. realised she go and sometimes they, they actually uh, make a loss because of all the transport costs yes. so one of her suggestions that she actually told me was whether we could zone it instead. So within Amokyo, there are a few sites. Yes. Uh, why don't you just give me Amokyo as in my basking cart and then she can just move to the next venue which is much closer to see whether there's space there. Okay. And so I spoke up for her and thankfully, uh, during 2020, the, the budget the committee of supply debates, we announced that we would do that. Yeah. We'll have zoning uh, starting with Amokyo and Clark Key. But unfortunately, as we know, that <laughs> yeah, pandemic then. hit and that, <laughs> you know, it, it didn't it, happen. I, just, yeah. I really wish to have seen that and when, and for Yu Shen's dream to come true and, and just pure coincidence that the day I delivered the adjournment motion was actually her birthday. Wow, that's wow. so meaningful. And I only found out during the, the Facebook wow. comments uh, that they were sharing this would be such a nice uh, present and gift for her that, I mean, I dedicated the whole motion to her and it was really because of her that I, I learned about this issue and spoke up for the buskers. Sure. So, I mean, we are talking about the pandemic, right? So definitely it has affected a lot of buskers. So can we understand more from Ying how like what, what are some of the issues that the buskers face right now and since um, last year? I mean, the 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 big thing in obviously is the fact that we are not on the streets, right? So, and that's that's the big thing, yeah. So it's more a question of how different buskers uh, have have reacted to that reality, um, and so 
on one hand, you have people who have pivoted completely, right? They've become like grab delivery drivers. They just uh, yeah. exited, they the, just exited the, the industry. And, and then there are people like me who have like, or like my bandmates who have like just got on with our day jobs and like just, okay, just hope that at some point it will come back. And then there are people who, who are in genuine financial trouble, right? Like they, they feel like they can't pivot. They feel like, um, yeah, and, and they're just hoping, they're just holding on to their savings and just waiting for the day that we can get back on the streets again. So there are, there are really different levels, but I would also say that uh, uh, buskers are a very diverse bunch. Right, like even pre-pandemic, different people were busking for different reasons, and so when the pandemic hit and the fact that they cannot go on the street, um, obviously different people will be hit by different things, lah. Yeah, and but and I would imagine that um, the ones who are most affected are the ones who are doing it full time. Yes, right? yes, for sure, for sure. And so, like what I said, when there is a full time income. Um, then it also depends on commitment level, right? If like you're a youth, or yeah, then maybe you have a chance of either holding it out or or maybe find finding another finding another job. If you've got family commitments, then then suddenly that becomes a, a a real priority, and yeah, and then some of them have gone back to school, taken a second degree or sec- taken a, like a part time degree, yeah. But basically, it's I would say it's it's yeah, it's just what. Singaporeans have been through, but maybe with the freelance nature of busking, then yeah, it might hit a little more. La, and the fact that yeah, we are just not on the streets. Though. Yeah. Louis, have you heard anyone um, coming to you for help during this period? Uh, many, including my residents. I mean, I mean the, the, the real issue is uh, those who do this full time. I mean, yes. they do it for a living. It's, uh, there isn't an alternative. You know, I mean, the, the yeah. NAC has tried. I mean, Nisunis, we've tried yeah. as well to go online and uh, to have some busking online, but it, Does you know, it work? It is, uh, to Does some it, extent, but yeah. you know, it's, I mean, that's busking. Busking is really being out on the streets with the crowd, yes. getting them going, yeah. uh, performing the, the circus acts, the, yeah. the singing. It's quite different to do it online when you're looking at yourself in the, yeah. on the screen. I mean, we try, NAC tried very hard uh, with some partnerships with uh, some of the online platforms to bring busking online, to do some uh, capacity building as well. But I, I mean, I know with all the buskers, nothing beats being out there. You know, because there's a lot of videos online, right? How how are they going to compete with all the millions of YouTube videos? I mean, you have you have probably hit the crux of the matter right there, which is that ultimately a live performer isn't a digital performer. Um, um, yeah, I would say that there are people who have who have made a career out of streaming online, and these people have made a a concerted effort and a career choice, right? To say, I'm going to be a YouTuber, I'm going to be on Twitch, I'm going to be on Facebook Live. That's and a different industry. Yeah, and that's a different industry. So the idea that, yeah, the idea that today we were on the streets and you can say, okay, um, yeah, people on the streets, yeah, we're going to give you a camera and a studio and then like, go do what you do and, 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 and hopefully you'll get some money. Yeah, um, it's, re- it's really difficult. Yeah, so I think that's, yeah, that you've you've hit the crux of the matter right there. That it is effectively two different industries. Um, my 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 co-chair Jonathan used to say it's like asking Cristiano Ronaldo <laughs> or Lionel Messi to play FIFA. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> so a good that's analogy. It. Yeah, I think that was this clip of Jonathan doing busking in his room and things yeah. were falling off yeah, his cupboard yeah, during yeah. the show. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's quite. I mean, yeah. I guess it's even more difficult for Jonathan who... Yes, yes. Oh, because he's a circus, circus, circus actor, actor yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, quite hard to juggle in his room. Yeah. But you see, the, the thing was he really tried. Yeah. But I, I yeah. think, again, they're all hoping to be back on the street. Correct, correct. Sure. But I think we there was some efforts, right? In December last year, there mm. was a pilot um, project, right? What, what happened during that time? It, was it successful? So, um, the pilot worked well, but I think everybody just felt that it was just a one-shot thing and there wasn't a follow-up. But I mean, uh, I would say that it was also unfortunate that the pilot happened just before your phase two heightened alert came in. Oh. So you had, a, you had a pilot and everybody thought that, ah, this will be the beginning of something. This is it, right? This You're going it, to be right? like, like bigger gonna, and bigger, yeah. going to be back, in, yeah. back to the normal and then, situation. And then, and then your HA came along and then that obviously just, 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 uh, just put everything on hold again. But I think that pilot also threw up some very interesting... Um, questions about busking going forward. 
So one of the things that I remember in Clark Key, and we, we had this, we gave this feedback to NEC as well, is that if you're going to put people one meter away from people, uh, put buskers one meter away from people, do you really need like a drum shield to like shield them from... Drum shield? What kind yeah. of drum shield? So um, if you know uh, like um, uh, drummers who play in concerts have this thing called a drum shield, which effectively insulates them, insulates their sound from going out so that the only thing you hear from the drum set is the recording or the mic up version of the drum set. But okay. the actual vibrations of the drum does not affect the rest of the, the performance venue. So it's a way of ensuring that, um, yeah, it's a way of ensuring that uh, the sound is really isolated or insulated within the, the, the area. But obviously that was being used as, as a as a safe management measure, which was quite oh, funny. Okay. Yeah. So so yeah. And that was that was one thing which was um which which was brought up. But I mean then there's there's also the other other side to it, which is that um yeah, but because it's on the street, then people can walk past. And if so people can walk past, then there will be a certain point in time whereby somebody will not be one meter from you. Or there is a possibility that somebody will not be one meter. That will from be you. unsafe, all yeah. right. So that will be unsafe. So that threw up a bit of a question and a bit of debate as to do you really need something like this? Or do you would the singers rather sing masks and stuff like that? And how do you really engage people through like uh, through like uh plastic walls and stuff like that. Um, so that was one issue. And of course, the other issue was who would bear the cost of a safe distancing ambassador, right? The government. Right, like, so, so, so yeah, <laughs> like, if you were doing it outside Clark Key, then is it Clark Key's thing, right? Is it, yeah, or, or, or is it Central Mall's thing? Or is it, like, the government? Or is it NAC? Or, or should the buskers, like, volunteer, right? Like I, I, I bus for one hour and I help my friend to be to be his safe Take distancing turns, uh. ambassador and help to help him do crowd control and, and, and effectively half my income, right? Yeah. So half my per hour income, right? Oh that's very sacrificial. Yeah, that's very sacrificial. Or is it the performer's responsibility to while I'm singing halfway through, right? And to like halfway through my song like hey you 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 and you keep one meter away. Yeah. So so I think there were a lot of these kind of questions that were thrown out right like like yeah because busking was a public good for a very long time and the public really benefited from it but now because of safe ma management measures you 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 suddenly have a whole list of issues that are thrown out um and who bears the cost of of that and that was something that um i think during the pilot wasn't really resolved okay. which was why i think um there was also difficulty in terms of like duplicating the pilot immediately yeah straight after and so yeah um the good news was that for one hour uh, buskers had the chance to be a busker for that one hour in a year. So, so yeah, so, yeah. I mean, those people who were there were like, well, I, I really love it. Like, I wish I could do more of it. But the reality was that because of the, the nature of the pilot, um, the time limit, and everybody just had one hour, and that was it. And a limited number of people had a limited amount of time. Yeah, which is not what bus buskers are used to. Yeah. Louis, what do you observe from the pilot also? I guess again we're we're all trying to live in this new world now. Yeah. And obviously the safe management measures have yeah has made it quite difficult for a lot of things, including busking, of course, because you are at two complete ends, right? All the buskers want to do is to gather the crowd so yeah. that you perform <laughs> and you sing in front of as many people as possible who stop to yes. watch your performance. And and so we're trying to see what's the best way forward now. You know, I think Jonathan also had this idea of busking on the go, so where to make sure people don't stop. Remember, <laughs> yeah. we had that. And I was telling Jonathan, How do you do that? Quite difficult because you're, I mean, for all these years, you want people to stop. Yeah, correct. But the minute people stop and start together, then we'll have this issue of, again, it will be breaching the, the safe management measures. Yes. But I, I think, again, it's exciting times ahead. Hopefully, uh, we will see how we, we can live in this new world and new uh, safe management measures that can also complement our busking scheme. Can I just go back to a little bit about um, in the past when you were setting up the Basker Association? What what were you trying to achieve, and what 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 actually got done? I think at the time we were trying to do it, um, there were two sides to it. One side to it was the fact that we wanted to really be a voice for for Baskers, and Baskers are by nature diverse, um, and 
might we say disorganized? Um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it is it is the reality that everybody is a freelancer, right? And it's difficult to organize a bunch of freelancers. That is the reality of it. And so to really bring uh, a voice to really say like, hey, look, um, this might be this is the policy, but the executing of the policy on the ground might not necessarily be be in our favor um, or might not necessarily help us. So I think that was one big idea. And then, of course, the other side to it is to really function as a support group, right? To really teach, to really share expertise, to really help uh, fellow buskers navigate, new buskers navigate this, and to really bring up the whole busking scheme or uh, uh, the whole busking uh, ecosystem within Singapore. I mean, Jonathan used to say that... Um, one of his big dreams is at some point we have a fringe festival in, in Singapore, right? And that's and that's really and it's not just I mean it come it brings up a whole ton of questions like in terms of capability development. It brings up a whole ton of questions with regards to foreign talent. Right? Oh. Do you accept foreign buskers at your fringe festival? Yeah, but what is a fringe festival without a foreign te- uh, without foreign buskers, right? But yeah, I mean, like Jonathan has been to Edinburgh Festival, right? And he, every, Edinburgh Fringe, and he goes there as a Singaporean. He doesn't go there and pretend to be a to be a, to be Scottish, right? <laughs> yeah, and I don't think he, he can, represents uh, himself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. So so, but yeah, these are it throws up a whole ton of questions again. But I mean, it's something that we strive for eventually. Um, but as of now, it's really baby steps. Um, just organizing people together, um, giving feedback where we can, um, yeah, helping each other out. And because we started during the pandemic, right? So the nature of the, our work as as BA has also has also evolved or has also taken a a, a, a huge uh, turn uh, compared to what we thought we were going to we, we signed up to do, yeah. So I guess you were helping them with um, coping with the pandemic, right? The, yeah. the association. Yeah. What, what are some of the things that you guys did? So I think what we try to do is we try to um, we try to talk to like stakeholders. We we would give feedback, like say for example on the on the busking on the busking pilot. So all the things that I've told you about Clark Key, we actually. We actually send a letter back to to NAC to give our feedback as well. Um, things like um, things like uh, we've also given feedback on digital busking. Uh, we've worked with Scape on the site so uh, to 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 organize things like capability development courses. So we've done something like a busking one hundred and one. Like uh, quite, I think we've done two sessions so far where we've gotten like um, new buskers or people who were interested in busking and really taught them how to like develop their act, right? Now you've got no chance to be on the street, but, and some of them, <laughs> sadly, or yeah, uh, just got their license just before the pandemic hit. So in a very weird way, they are going back for a re-audition to renew their license despite never having been on the street. Oh no. Yeah, so so this is, yeah, I mean, as we approach one year or two years, right, depending on how long the time, how long your, your license was given for, yeah, then this would be something that, yeah, we would need to help them with. So really sort of help them like structure their act, structure their thoughts in terms of what they want to bring to the, what they want to bring to the street when they can go on the street, yeah. Louis, you helped to set up the association also, right? So what was your experience like and how do you help them to structure the uh, the organisation? It, it really feels like just yesterday, but yeah. we're like going down memory lane. Because <laughs> yeah, right. so all this was pre-pandemic, where it yes. was a di- different yeah. world. But I, I remember when we met up with the Baskers and you know, in, in drafting that speech on the, the motion, uh, we, part of the issues was we realised that there was this wide spectrum of Baskers and unfortunately, a lot of times they were competing against each other. Mm. And that's what I raised in the speech. You know, some, there were some fights on Orchard Road because people would put their speaker there in the morning and then perform in the evening. Mm. Almost to choke the space. And mm. I think Jonathan was finding it difficult to get his space because he's a circus act, mm. which needed more space. And, you know, there's this huge competition where I thought we, we shouldn't be competing against each other. If we can find synergy and yeah. speak with one voice. And yeah. how beautiful would it be for buskers to help develop policies with regards to busking. Mm. And I think then we will get somewhere. And that's why we thought it would be a good idea if we set up the busking association, get all the buskers together and again, uh, see how we can make this busking scheme much better. Mm. And I mean, we, we saw that partially, I remember they were telling me like in Tampines where they have some WhatsApp group and it's a very hot space. So they really sort of pre-book each other. I'll take the 8 to 9 p.m. I'll take the 9 to 10 p.m. So again, yeah. 
how beautiful did buskers working together without government stepping in yeah. to try and regulate their own space? And I, I always said that it's, I mean, as a government, we should have a more light touch approach. Let mm. the busking association take the lead in developing this scheme here. I think that would be the best position we should be in. From the grounds up, right? Yeah, they would know best. I mean, again, yeah. if, if we can get this whole thing going, I mean, yeah. post-pandemic again, uh, that would really be beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, let me just jump a little bit back to the pandemic also. Sure. Um, I think I read somewhere that um, there was an attempt to use like digital payment, right? Yeah. For you guys. Did it actually work? Um, goes back to what we were saying just now, which mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. the idea that they are effectively two different industries. So I'm not saying that the digital payment or Twitch pe- people on Twitch, people on YouTube, uh, yeah, are, 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 are different or are better or are worse, but it's just a different industry altogether. And the reality is bringing, yeah, the re- yeah there are different realities when it comes to live performance compared to what. Like say if I'm on the street of Orchard Road, like, I can honestly tell you I will get two or three people, two or three audience members who are sitting there watching me perform just because they've got half a cup of uh, Slurpee that they cannot finish before they enter the <laughs> MRT train. <laughs> this is something that I don't have on the, on the, on, <laughs> online, right? Okay, online, so you have passerby. I have passerby. I have people who are trying to finish a drink. The drink is a little too cold. And then, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not endorsed by 7-Eleven or anything, but, you know, but thank you, right? <laughs> Yeah, but you sure. This, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this this podcast is not this, sponsored. This is about seven eleven. Yes, yes. yes. Um, yeah, but you know these things happen, right? And so, um, but when you're online, you're competing against everything. You're competing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the you're competing against every video that has been produced in the history of the world ever, and that's really different from a live performance. Yeah. And so your imperfections are probably magnified. Your, um, the fact that people can access YouTube and not pay and yet have to access you and, and you're constantly asking them to pay. It's like, yeah. And then the question is, as a busker, do you ask for, ad, do you ask for money, right? Yeah. They're not allowed to, right? At yeah, the moment. yeah. And, and so it's a, it's, a, it's a bit weird. I mean, on the street, you can sort of like, uh, you know, yeah, when you're done, yeah, or... Or you can, or you can say things, or you can say things to say. Um, you can have a headline, right? To say, ah, uh, yeah, you can help me by what, yeah, by by giving a certain amount or whatever. But you can't do that. Or uh, and even if you can do that, um, it will look really weird. It'll be like some. It, it's like those irritating YouTubers who just keep asking you to like, uh, to like donate and 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 give it, give to my Patreon and whatever. Subscribe, right? subscribe <laughs> and like, smash a like. Yeah. So I don't think that. Yeah. So I think it's very different. Yeah. And so, I know some people have tried. I know some people have tried harder than others. I know some people have really tried, but I would be hesitant to say that. Um, there has been success or at least or widespread success. But what about on the street? Like yeah, maybe QR are, code and all yeah, that? So on pay the street, now, pay la? Um, I mean, um, so, there, so there was this thing called, uh, yeah, we, we tried with, with QR codes. And um, yeah, there are, and QR codes are part of, I would say part and parcel of, of life what, now. <laughs> uh, yeah, of, of, of life now. So there are buskers who in the pre-pandemic world would already put a QR code there. Oh, okay, simply okay. because we understand that not everybody brings cash. And if you bring cash and like if you had a $50 note in your wallet, you're unlikely to put it in my what? And, or, and, and dig for change, or, or right? dig for change, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so I guess it's the same. Like, we've all evolved. So uh, <laughs> usual last time with Vegas, the donation tins. Now yeah. also you have to put QR code in it. Yeah. Because ah, yeah. nobody really carries much cash around. Anymore. Correct, correct. And, and that's fine. So I don't think the QR code is a, is, is, is a big thing. I would say most bands or most uh, performers who, who understand that there is a bit of money to be made from there would already have made their own QR codes and, and stuff. Yeah. So that's relatively... And again, normal. I mean, uh, it, I don't think buskers can ever go digital. Yeah. I say on the digital performances. I mean, that's... That's one reason about the motion as well. There was this bigger picture that I wanted that, to show that there, there's different kinds of success in Singapore. And I remember again at the time when we were talking to the buskers, there were some that saying they were quite shy to perform on the street and that they, mm. it, almost like loose face. Mm. And I remember the media spoke about some that they wear cap and sunglasses so that mm. the friends wouldn't recognise them. Yeah. And I thought that was a sad part that it, it's something that we should celebrate. Yeah. 
uh, they are performers, they are artists as well, and the, not on the stage, but on a different kind of stage that uh, we should support and recognise uh, the different kind of successes in Singapore. And to be fair, we have come a long way from that point. Yeah, we have come a long way with regards to audience acceptance mm. and with regards to um, yeah people in the arts looking at busking as a viable supplement to their income. Maybe not fully, but like yeah, we we also know of like uh, instrument teachers who have decided that you know I also on the times that I'm not teaching, I also want to come out and 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 play for play for the public. So yeah, we wanted to get away from that, that mindset that the buskings buskers are beggars. Yeah. There was this very old traditional oh, view yeah. that if you're basking <laughs> means you're begging for money. But yeah. I, I think we wanted to move away from that too. Mm. I mean, we always talk about it like in Covent Garden in England, if you're a busker there, it's actually well, quite a, a badge of honour. I mean, mm. uh, people fight to get into the busking spot there. It's, it's quite competitive. There's a whole website. I think we talked about it at a much earlier stage where yeah. if we could get to there where we have our own website, you know, put all the performance. I mean, if you go there and you see Covent Garden now, you... See how they really advertise the buskers as something that they really want to become. Yeah. And I wanted to get to that stage in Singapore. Yeah. Okay, but um, as you are mentioning this, right, is, is this a forgotten group in the art scene actually? Like, is, do people like, you know, you are a busker, you are not part of our scene or you are you know, not part of our music scene. Is there such a, 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 a thought? I think the reality is that a lot of buskers have two lives. Okay. So okay. Um, there aren't bus- there aren't that many buskers who would who I can say do nothing but busking. Like Jonathan, an example, right? He does his corporate gigs. Jonathan should be here. Yeah. We he, mentioned yeah, he's so many yeah, times. We mentioned, we've mentioned <laughs> you should put a counter when we say yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just put a picture. Ding 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 every time. Yeah. But um but yeah, he he will do, I mean the reason why he's not here is because he's at Esplanade performing. Wow, that's Esplanade, awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's the reality of it, right? So he is part of the art scene. He, but if you want to say that um, are buskers known in the art scene as being buskers, then yes, you, you might be right that there is a certain level of, there is still a certain level of, of segregation. But individual buskers, be, simply because of how our lives overlap with other areas of the, bus, uh, of the art scene, I don't think we are that unknown. But buskers as a group, then yes, I would say so. But it's also like in terms of in terms of policy, right? I mean, um, the um, the um, just think of like say resources allocated in the National Arts Council, for example. I think the busking scheme is run by like a total of like two full time employees and like, yeah, and like one one subcontracting relationship, and that's pretty much it. And then the rest of it is like a ton of um, it's like it's like agreements, right? Like um, with URA, with the Singapore Police Force, with N Parks and whatever. And it's just a ton of agreements that have like been put in place, which is cool. Um, but if you think about like the number of employees like that are promoting the theatre scene, the music scene, um, yeah, it's obviously uh, visual arts, right? Literary, um, yeah, it's obviously different, lah. Yeah. Okay. So it's how we can scale it up. Yeah. Again, mm-hmm. that's why we have the busking association. Correct. Right? Correct. I think at that point when I raised the motion, it was about two or three hundred registered buskers. Yeah. 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 So quite a, a small number then. We're hoping to grow as well. But yeah, sure. I, I guess again now post pandemic is whether we can now bring it back and start to grow it again. Yes. We are hoping, right, that yeah. things will get back to normal. They can go back onto the streets again. We all are. I'm pretty yeah. sure. I mean, yeah. NAC yeah. is also hoping that we can we are all hoping, restart this. Yeah. Correct. So you mentioned about the number of um, civil servants who are helping to support this yeah. industry. So, I mean, what, what is your wish list? Like, what do you wish the government can further help you, help the buskers? I think it's quite a bit of what uh, Louis has mentioned also, right? Like, um, there, there are two ways of thinking about it. One way, of course, is to say, yeah, let's, let's, let's throw more resources at it, right? And let's like have one whole department worth of people. And then, of course, the other side to it is let, let the ground up do it, right? Yeah, let it, let it happen from the ground up. And I said that I, I, I do believe that there needs to be a balance and a nuanced re- approach to this. Um, yeah, because, because busking, unlike some other art forms out there, uh, does require... Uh, is a bunch is is made up of a bunch of freelancers who have decided to take their arts onto the street and it's an individual decision for each artist to make you compare that to say a production whereby there is 
one producer who has pretty much decided this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get funding and then I'm going to hire a ton of employees. I'm going to hire my stage manager, my lighting, my sound and whatever. I'm going to hire my actors. So it's, it's very different. So I would say that, um, yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't say that like just having a ton of, uh, like having like 20 civil servants is going to help this. But um, yeah, it really has to be ground up. And then, and then to scale up the government um, resources where required. And it may be, may be full-time civil servants, it may be funding, it may be capability development, but it's really to see what are the ground-up needs at different points in time and then to, to extend support where, where needed and where required. Yeah. I don't know whether you want to talk about the Basking Lab. Oh, uh, yes. Um, What's that? That, be, that sounds That's exciting. So, interesting um, initiative yeah. that we're going to so, so the Buskers Association actually proposed something, uh, proposed the, uh, a Buskers Lab. Um, and basically the idea is to really um, allow for Buskers to come together and um, innovate and think of new acts and collaborate. And we've managed to get uh, some funding from the SEP grant. What's SEP? Uh, uh, Self-employed uh, persons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think that was something that was really helping a lot of the art scene go through this, this mm. pan, pan, uh, pandemic. Um, yeah, and we managed to get some help from that and we will be putting together um, a series of workshops and also a series of um, uh, performances eventually when it's, when it's all done. So, so yeah, I think that will be a, that will be a good chance for uh, buskers to like come back and remember how it felt like <laughs> and, and maybe hopefully that's the the beginning of something again lah. yeah yeah so so that's really what the basket slap is about and yeah so far we've got a relatively good uh, we are oversubscribed actually at this point mm. as I speak so uh, uh, both Buskers Association members as well as registered buskers um, from um, uh, NAC registered buskers are able to uh, able to sign up, and we've already been oversubscribed, partially because of the of the number of time slots that we have, right? So it's a limited <laughs> number of time slots, and therefore, yeah, there's a, there's oversubscription. But yeah, so I'm not gonna say like, well, suddenly like a lot. It's, of a, good yeah, it's a good problem. Yeah, it's a good, but it's a good problem. Other than nobody sign up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's a bigger problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so we are yeah, and we are looking forward to like really some some very interesting collaborations. Um, hopefully between different acts, different buskers coming together to put things together. Collaborations, and, yeah, right? collaborations, and also to yeah, and also for some of the newer buskers as I said I think the, the ones I really feel for are the ones who, who just got approved and before they got on the street then pandemic hit and so for these people we're really like trying to like help them like get back up to speed get up to speed because the when you prepare for the audition it's very different from when you're on the street is like, it very difficult the, I, haven't, I haven't tried don't look at me okay, <laughs> I can't sing I'm just with an emotion speech. Okay, so the, can't sing and dance <laughs> period we, we will try we'll make Louis try it one day <laughs> It's official. I said it in parliament. I cannot G-O-H, sing it. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would say, I would say it's different because when you're preparing for an audition, you're almost it's almost like preparing for an exam, right? You prepare your you prepare three songs. You practice that really, really hard, um, and then you're, pre- you're you're playing for four people. Like it's a bit like American Idol, lah. I mean, if you think about it, right? Sure. Uh, yeah, and then and then uh, American Idol without the like nasty comments, like the nasty comments are written somewhere, but it's not told to you straight. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah, um, but yeah, then you go on the street the first time, and suddenly you are like, oh wait, I've got two hours of time, and then what do I do? Yeah, what do I do? Yeah, so maybe during the audition, people might be looking at number one, can you sing in tune? Can you sing in time for sure? Have, do you have a few more songs that you have prepared? Yes. Uh, are, your, are your microphones good? Is your amplifier good? And that kind of thing, you know, like very technical, very basic stuff for you to start off. And then you go on the street and then you're like suddenly, yeah. And then you really have to like learn how to engage your audience. Uh, do you want to choose songs? Do you want to take song requests? Do you not want to take song requests? How much time do you want to spend talking to your audience compared to how much time do you want to spend performing? Yeah. Or do you want to perform and talk to your audience at the same time? Yeah. So there are a lot of, yeah. Planning your, planning your performance. Yeah. Do you want to say thank you to everybody who drops a coin? Because then if you're strumming your guitar and singing a song and every time somebody drops a coin, you say thank you, then you might, you might be accompanying your, you might be just accompanying a ton of thank yous with your guitar. <laughs> very, right? very disruptive. So, right. so yeah, th- these are all questions that you have to think about. Like, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's, a, it's, a difficult, it's, it's a difficult thing. So I would say the audition is just the beginning, but it's really about getting on the street and really getting a support group. And I, we know of people who have gotten their audition 
and gone on the street the first time and given up after the first try. Oh. Yes. Wow, okay. And this is this is this is not this a small reality, this, right? this is yeah, but and this is not a small group. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, 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 it does. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like it's like if you're a taxi driver, today you get your taxi driver license and then you go in and the first day you have a difficult customer. And then you throw key. Yeah, you throw key. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, what they, it, they say, it, right? It, yeah, you throw key. Yeah, it happens. It happens. I'm I'm not going to stand here and say, oh, you know, so long as you pass the, the audition, you're ready to be a busker. No, it's not. It's, 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 it's really different. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, that's what we're trying to achieve also uh, with yeah, the Basking correct. Association. That, I mean, the audition process is something I, I think we can strengthen. Yes. Um, as you rightly mentioned, we don't tell you why you fail and didn't get the card. And I, oh, they don't? They yeah. don't. I mean, okay. that's a, yeah. And I, I think we had, I mean, earlier talks about how perhaps those that didn't get the card, uh, we could step mm. in to try and help them. Correct. Um, have some venues. We were thinking of in, in Eastwood East where yes. those that couldn't get the busing That's your constituency, here, right? Yes. Yeah. You can test it out and see yeah. what, what, how you can improve, then go back again to try and get your card. And it was the same thing. Like one of the things that we were talking about in the capability development is also to really help you try out. Like we, I remember we had like we had like six different modules, and like after you structure, I think our last module was really be on the street, and a mentor will be there to watch mm. your act, and wow. to tell you how to improve your act because there is nothing like it. We can tell you, okay, this is all the theory about audience engagement. This is audience psychology. This is what, this is how you write your headline. This is how you uh, fix your costume and how you fix your props. And then you can go on the street and everything falls apart. So um, yeah, we had one module whereby it was just one of the, one of the more seasoned buskers goes down with you and then, yeah, you just go and try it for like half an hour. And if you can do it, we will tell you why. And if you cannot, we will tell you. And, but to, that, to do that, we needed open mic spaces, right? We needed spaces where you could busk without being a licensed busker to begin with. And that's where uh, Louis has yeah, <laughs> volunteered <laughs> Nisud East. And also we've had, such, <laughs> we've had similar conversations with Scape as well to like, to like find really like safe spots where people can... Can, try can out try without out. a license, yeah. is it? Yeah, to try so we, we, we had a few sessions in my yeah. hawker centre, Yishun Park Hawker Centre. That went quite well. Yeah. Uh, we did a few sessions at a water park as well. Mm. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Oh, I'm sorry to say, Jonathan came down to perform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Who is Jonathan? <laughs> so it's nice, you know, the kids are all wet playing the water park and Jonathan starts juggling and they all gather around. It's really quite a nice, I mean, that's what we wanted that the, that the, the kids were there to experience what busking is like and give the buskers a chance to, to perform as I, well. I'd right? like to say that the, one of the reasons <laughs> why we mentioned Jonathan is because he's a genuinely successful busker. And, and he's the chairman of and the And he's the co-chairman. So I have to announce, I have to, I have to And you are the yeah. co-chairman. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so that's, but the other side to it is, um, some of the times these young buskers or these aspiring buskers need someone to look up to. Sure. And also need someone to lend them credibility. Right, someone to say, hey, you know, I'm somebody who can make this my full-time job. I'm good enough to command this amount of money from the streets. And I believe that you can try and you can go. Actually, and that's that's a very big question of mine. Like, yeah. how do you actually survive being a full-time busker? The reality is you can. You really? The reality is you can. Yeah. Um, if you do it well, if you do your craft well, if you engage your audiences well, you can, and if you have a structured idea of what you want to do and what you want to do is accepted by the mass market, you can make this a full-time job. But what Absolutely, do you think? yeah. But what do you think? I mean, like, um, I'm just thinking from the very, yeah. very conventional point yeah. of view, if I'm a parent, mm. my kid wants, mm. gets a degree and yeah. wants to become a full-time busker, I mean... But it's hard work, lah. I mean, in the same way, any full-time job requires maybe at least 40 hours a week. Yeah, put in 40 hours a week, right? And a lot of the times you can say, yes, the, 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 the main, the main uh, prime time will be like maybe Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. But there's a lot of work that goes, otherwise, uh, that goes outside of it, right? Lunch times, right? Finding your different spots, uh, crafting, practicing different acts, crafting your, your headlines and crafting your, your entire um, performance to flow in a way that eventually ends up with, um, with everybody feeling really good about themselves, right? And when everybody feels really good about themselves, of course they will. They will reward you financially. Yeah. And so there are, there, there is a, and 
That's why, that's why I said, why, why, we, why we mentioned Jonathan's because he's cracked the code. And he's, he's a full-time basker. He's a full-time basker. He's cracked the code and he's willing to go, up, go to, uh, to them and teach. And he's not the only one. He's just the face of it, right? There are other, there are other ones out there like Fadawus, for example, or Jason Yu, who also have cracked the code, or ETC, who have also cracked the code. And they mm. have made that their full-time, yeah, they have made them their, 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 made it their full-time their, their Career, full-time work. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is possible. Yeah, so um, to, all as, uh, to all parents of aspiring buskers out there, the answer is yes, please don't dash your kid's dreams so early. Um, yeah, but let your kid go and try. And if your kid makes it, your kid makes it. And if your kid doesn't make it, then, then convince him to do accounting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, a bit, I, I remember Jonathan was at one point saying he was going to go to overseas to do a degree in, in yeah. basking. You can go to circus, circus school. X, yeah. You can go to circus school. A yeah. natural degree. I mean, again, a different, different kind of, of success in, in our yeah, society. Yeah. You know, we should learn to accept it. Yeah. Differences. Yeah. I would like to thank my guests, Louis, Ing Hao, and Jonathan, who is not here for the time today. Thank you all for listening in. See you on the next episode of On Diversity. On Diversity is a podcast inspired by the Institute of Policy Studies Managing Diversity's Research Program. Please follow or subscribe to the On Diversity podcast to get notified when we have a new episode. You can visit our website, ipscommons.sg, for more info.